In this video, we're going to learn how to use the put s function in C. So the put s function allows us to output a string to standard output, which by default is going to be the shell or the terminal. We can call the function like this, put s, and then we can supply the function with a string as an argument. So we could have here print string literal, and we're going to supply the function with a string literal as an argument. So we can now save our program and then compile it, and then we'll execute it to test it out. And here we get print string literal output on the terminal. So the function is working correctly. Now, unlike printf, put s can accept only one string as an argument. With printf, we might have a string containing placeholders as our first argument to the function, and we might supply additional arguments to take the place of those placeholders in the string that's output. So this call to printf would output the string 10 space 12. With put s, we just can't do this. We just output one string exactly as it is, and we can't use placeholders. Another big difference between put s and printf is that the put s function will actually automatically output a new line character after outputting the string that it's given as an argument. So for example, we could call put s again here. We could say put s and then another string. We could then save our program and compile it and run it. And here we get print string literal and then on another line, we get another string. And what's happened here is that unlike printf, the put s function automatically outputs a new line character after outputting the string that it's supplied as an argument. So for example, if we changed these calls to puts, to be calls to printf instead. And then we save our program and compile it and execute it. Now we get this as output. The strings just output one after the other. There's no new line to put this another string here on a new line. Now put s is going to output to what is called standard output, which by default is going to be the shell here. It is actually possible to redirect standard output, such that the put s function would output to a file. So for example, we could change these to be calls to put s again. Then we could recompile our program after saving it. And this time when running our program, we're going to have greater than and then file.txt. This will redirect standard output and instead these strings will be output to file.txt. So we'll run this program we'll see that a file called file.txt has been created. And if we read the file contents, we'll see that it contains our strings. Now we can supply put s with a string as an argument in different ways. Here we've directly supplied a string literal as an argument. We could also supply a pointer to a string literal as an argument too. So for example, we could have here car star text is equal to print string literal. Then here, we can supply text as an argument to put s. And what's going to happen is that the function is going to output the string that's pointed to by text. We'll comment out this second call to put s and then save our program and compile it. And then we'll execute it. And here we get print string literal. We could also call put s with a car array as an argument and we could store a string into the car array. So for example, here we could have car text and then open bracket, close bracket to create a car array. And then we'll have string in car array and we'll store this string into the car array. Then here we'll supply text, the car array as an argument. And this will also work. We can save our program and recompile it and try it out. And now we do get string in car array as output. Now the put s function will return the special value EOF if it fails to output the string. So we could check for that. We could have here if put s returns the special value EOF for end of file, then we'll return one to stop the program. Returning one instead of returning zero is a signal to the shell that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. Now it's going to be pretty rare in practice that put s actually fails. 
it could fail, for example, if we were redirecting our output to a file and the file system ran out of memory. Now it is important that the put s function is provided a proper string as an argument with a null terminator character at the end of the string to properly terminate the string. To use the put s function, we also need to include the stdio.h library where it's defined. So this is how we can use the put s function in C to output a string. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.